Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm uh, on the new YouTube channel, Enjoy Today Infinity. Uh, my wife, Kathy, will also be hopefully uh, involved in some of these videos going forward. But today, uh, it's a video on our liquid springs install, and she said, honey, you just talk about it. So, uh, here we go. So, why did we pursue a liquid springs install? Driving our coach home on its maiden voyage from Indianapolis uh, to Oblong, Illinois, uh, which is where we currently are, uh, there were some unsettling aspects of the ride. There were major bumps and jarring events going up on aprons and off of aprons uh, from bridges, going across railroad tracks. Uh, you've probably experienced those where you go over a, a major bump or change in elevation uh, and you get that jarring effect and you actually hear it through your coach as your dishes jump in the cabinets and, and you hear other things making large bumping noises or jarring noises. Uh, so where there were those uh, and just the noise effect of that adds a certain additional level of stress to uh, driving a, a bus down the road. Uh, then in, additionally going around curves, uh, the posted speed limits are definitely a max uh, without stabilization uh, because your coach sways with that higher center of gravity you get a lot of body lean and going around uh, curves in the roadway or exit ramps etc. Um, it's just unsettling if you're not used to it and, and we certainly were not used to it. and. Um, the, the swaying motion when you're pulling into parking lots where you get that rocking back and forth several times until your coach stabilizes. So uh, we wanted to, to fix that. And uh, we looked at a number of different options. Sumo Springs uh, certainly addressed some of that, but not all of it. And then we were watching a video uh, from RV Diem uh, where they did a ride along with Wayne Wells from Liquid Springs at the Tampa RV show this past year and I researched that option further and it really did sound like uh, it would solve the problems we were trying to address. So I called Wayne Wells, uh, we purchased our, uh, our package and kit from them and had them install it at their factory in Lafayette, Indiana, and uh, we just got it back. Uh, after you know, having been back, made the entire drive back, and you'll see some initial impressions after the first five miles in the video later on, but uh, overall could not be happier. Uh, it addressed all of the issues that we tried to uh, address, and there is still a little bit of uh, correction needed in the steering when a semi passes you or you pass a semi. Um, but other than that, it addressed all of the other issues that we were hoping for. Uh, not that, you know, if you hit some major potholes, not that you're not going to uh, eliminate that jarring noise because there is still some of that. It can't fix everything, but just did a tremendous job. And uh, we wanted to post this video to show you what the install looks like. Uh, Chad from Liquid Springs was kind enough to video certain segments of the install for us so you can see what gets taken off and what gets put on. Uh, you'll also see the instructional period that they had with us telling me how to use the interface inside the coach. And uh, thank, I want to thank Chad for doing that for us. And uh, then also as you get to the end of the video, uh, if this is something you're interested in pursuing, I encourage you to call uh, Wayne Wells and there is a special offer that he's uh, provided to me to put on this video as well. So don't miss that. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy the install. This is Steve Eberly's coach at Liquid Spring. We're in the process of installing the rear suspension. There's some of the components that are going to be coming out. The leaf spring, the hangers. blocks above and below the axle. We'll also be taking out the shock absorbers.
Another little noteworthy thing here. These are all of the takeoff parts. Hangers, leaf springs, U-bolts. Okay, so day two of the installation process. As you can see, the leaf springs have been removed, making way for the front hangers, upper strut mounts, and axle clamp group. The blocks have been removed from both sides. The surfaces have been prepared. Exhaust is temporarily removed. Got our axle clamps. Of course, all the hardware. Front hangers. Control arms. secondary volumes, upper strut mounts, power module, ECU, rear main harness, installation of the dash harness is already in, and then we have the struts. So here we are, two hours into day two. We've got the front hangers installed. The axle clamp group is in place. Upper and lower control arms are in. As you can see they have not been torqued yet. That has to be done at ride height. Going over to the other side here. Secondary volume is installed. Got the power module up in place here with the ECU and the harness. start this video from front to back kind of going over an overview there's the wiring there's the power module installed hoses are connected to the secondary volumes rear suspension is in place Track rod has been securely mounted and connected. Torqued down at ride height. Exhaust is back in place. We were able to reuse the originally equipped exhaust, utilizing the heat shield and everything for protection. Hose routing towards the struts. Those routing towards the struts. ABS lines are securely connected. Rear view of the axle with the track rod, everything is torqued. Brake lines are secured. We are ready to let it down. Do the calibration and take her on our maiden voyage. 
Okay, we're going to perform the first calibration on the liquid spring suspension. We're going to achieve that by pressing and holding the up and down arrows on the height side simultaneously. And as we see that start to flash, we're going to make our way outside. Okay, so we're outside and as you can see the suspension is pumping up. may or may not be able to hear it with the speaker on the camera, but you can definitely see he's rising up. And you can now notice that it's uh, coming down. So it goes to full compression and full rebound and takes its readings and then performs a, an average of the two readings to set its new calculated ride height, which is pretty close to what the factory is with the leaf springs. Look up underneath here, let's see. Takes a few seconds to get the system pumped back up. Once it starts building pressure, you can hear the noise in the pump kind of change as it picks on a load. And then we'll see the vehicle start to raise up again. And there she goes now. And there we go, there's our new calculated ride height. All right, so Chad here is gonna do our walkthrough of our system for us real quick. Okay, so starting with the driver interface, um, as you can see there's uh, two up arrows and two down arrows for each column, ride and height. If you depress uh, the arrow on the left-hand side, which is ride, uh, each time you depress it, you're going to move that air, uh, the LED to each different position. That is adjustable at any time, at any speed. So if you feel like you want to have different sensation while you're driving, at any time you can you can change that. Uh, the changing of that does not affect the ride quality. It only changes the uh, reaction that the vehicle will, will, will go to when you make the steering change or external forces. For example, if it's windy out and you're in comfort mode, you could get a little bit of more of a sway in the vehicle, where if you put it in sport, as soon as it starts to sense that movement, it's gonna instantly put you back to your straight. Um, most folks, I think, run in that, but again, it's all user preference. The other column is your height column. Uh, you'll notice there are actually five uh, options there. Three of them are user selectable when you've got the rear suspension. So high, normal, and low, you can adjust. So if you want to push the down arrow right now, as a matter of fact, you'll see what happens and then I'll explain to you what's going on. So as you notice, the green immediately went from normal down to low and then you see the light start flashing. So what's happening is, is the solid green light indicates your commanded position. The flashing light indicates your transition. So as it's moving from low to high, that's where you're getting that flash, okay? Um, this can only be done at speeds under 15 miles per hour. So if you, for example, were to leave the system in low or high for whatever reason, and you start to drive, as soon as you hit 15 miles per hour, you're gonna see that light jump from wherever it was to normal, and the system will put you where in the normal ride. It needs to be there for you know center of gravity and just mm -hmm. driver control. High, we pretty much tell folks it's a good option when you go to get into a steep incline at a gas station or something like that, or to help keep the back end from dragging. Um, low, it could ease for you know hooking up a trailer or something along those lines. You're also going to use low prior to using your jacks. So what you'll do when you get to a um, a park or something where you're going to use your leveling jacks, you're going to command the system to low, 
and then you're actually going to quick press and release the red power button. If you want to go ahead and do that now, you'll see what happens. So that essentially just disabled the liquid spring system. Now it's okay for you to use your jacks. Okay. Okay. Now since I'm starting out in low, won't that then if I use my jacks lift the tires off the ground sooner than it other normally would? So the system isn't going to be affixed in it's going to, it's, the tires are still going to kind of travel. The tires are going to be on the ground. It's going to go up. If you were to go all the way up and extend the struts to their highest point, then you could eventually pull the tires off. The reason why we have you command it to low and then you and turn it off and then use your jacks is because the fluid is susceptible to temperature change. Huh. So what could happen, say for example, you left it in normal, you used your jacks and just had a slight amount of adjustment. If it was to get warm overnight, it could theoretically lift you up off of your jacks, where if you're in low, you have that much more travel. I see. Okay. Okay. So, of course, when the day comes when you're, when you're going to start driving again, you would retract your jacks, turn the system back on, and then you could, you know, command it to normal, and it would go back up. And you can do that now if you want. Um, one press, well, here you go. So now you'll see the low light starts to flash. Now, while this is doing this, if you notice, there's four amber lights around the uh, arrows. Mm -hmm. so take your steering wheel and turn it 20 degrees or more to the left. Okay, you see the lights went out. Mm -hmm. Now go back to center. That right there is telling the system that you're in a turn. So it uses you know, your brake pedal, it uses speed, it uses steering, the vehicle angle, all of these uh, bits of information a thousand times a second to determine the best quality control you can have with the vehicle. Interesting. We suggest after, you know, a thousand plus miles, you take it and just have the bolts looked at for a retorque. I do use the industry standard after the bolts have been torqued. There's a white mark that we put on the bracket and also on the nut or the bolt. So if you were to see that movement, that would indicate the need to have those torqued. More than likely, you're not going to have anything. It's a safety protocol. The main place you're going to want to focus your attention is probably going to be on the axle clamp group because there is so much you know stress that's around mm -hmm. those just make sure that they don't move all of your torque specs and everything are outlined in the manual that we've provided to you okay. as well as a quick reference guide which will kind of outline some of the stuff we're discussing as far as um, using the I think the jacks are in there um, and also the talks about the fluid system with its susceptibility to temperature change Okay. Um, that's pretty much about it. Okay. Great. All right. So we just picked up our new Mar Canyon Star 3710 from Liquid Springs, and already I can tell a dramatic difference in the handling and the ride. Uh, we've gone over several bumps, and you don't get that jarring uh, sound or feeling either one. Uh, when you turn corners with any speed at all, you don't get that extreme body lean like you normally get uh, before the liquid springs. So we just went over a big bump there and you didn't hardly hear a thing if you heard it at all. Um, when you turn corners, your horizon stays level. Um, and uh, it's just a much more feeling of control uh, when you're driving and when you're changing lanes. You don't feel like you're uh, about to lose it when you have to do something quickly. So uh, the first five miles, uh, very, very happy and uh, well worth the investment from my perspective. Uh, we'll continue to report back uh, once we get more experience with it and let you know our impressions. But uh, initial impression is two thumbs up.